Uh, 90% of what happens there. And Patia stays there. To your grave. I'll tell one story that's not too incriminating. And I'll leave out the parts that are incriminating. But I'll tell a story about it. Alright, so... I'm in Thailand. Salt was there. Salt was there with me. Uh, but he, in this particular story, we weren't hanging out. He wasn't in my group. But we were there together. Uh, so he was somewhere else. Uh, he was probably still guess on the I'm boat. Coming, I guess I'm coming now. Yeah, so he was uh, somewhere else. He wasn't with me for this particular story. Skeeby has time, Sam. Does Glimish allow chatbots? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, so Salt so was in Thailand with me, but he was not with me for this story, okay? Um, so we sailed there on, like, a whack-ass uh, civilian ship. Normally, you go on, like, a big Navy ship. We went on this, like, really whack, small, not-to-be-lived-in, that we lived in, uh civilian boat it was uh yeah high-speed vessel <laughs> yeah it was uh <laughs> yeah we call we call them hsvs so hell sent vehicle yeah it's uh it's more like an airplane for the for the water it's really really fast but and it's made to hold a lot of people in like a seating area for a couple hours but we lived in it for like a month which is like trying to live on an airplane for a month it was horrible like, luckily, I was high enough rank that I had an actual bed, because a lot of guys didn't have beds. They had to sleep in these, like, cots that they had to fold up every day. It was terrible. Tiny, tiny user base. Yeah, there's that. All right, so we take that ship to a bunch of countries, and then we end up in Thailand in Pattaya Beach. Pattaya Beach is, like, on the coast of the Pacific Ocean. And... It's like the number two party city next to um, Bangkok. So Bangkok's like the big city that everybody goes to. And then Pattaya Beach is like the next biggest one that people go to. So we're in Pattaya Beach. Uh, and me and my friends go into town. And you go down to this place called Walking Street. So you like go from the beach past the Hard Rock Hotel. It's like a major landmark there. It's huge. And then you go down like the main strip and there's a bunch of like you know, shops and random shit, and you get to Walking Street. Walking Street is, like, the red light district, but, like, not, like, the red light district. So there's, like, prostitution there. There's some lady boys. There's less lady boys than you'd think, but there are quite a few. If you're not drinking, you can pretty much spot them, right? They're, they look different for the most part. Uh, I don't think I was ever tricked. Uh, but they're very aggressive, and they'll, like, grab you by the cock and balls and try to pull you into a hotel to have sex with them for money. So, we're walking down the street, and, uh, you know, me and my rascal friends are trying to get into some trouble, right? We're, like, we're looking for a good time, and we're uh, looking to, you know, do some things that you probably can't do in America, you know? We're only going to be there for a couple days, so. Uh, a man approaches us, an NPC, if you will, with a quest. He tells us, uh, do you want to see a pussy show? And you know there's only one answer to that fucking question. So obviously we said yes. And he uh, he took us down the street to this club. And we had to pay to get in. It was like 50, you know, floppy Monopoly dollars or whatever fucking currency they use there, right? I mean, you fucking give it to them. And we went upstairs and there's like a strip club, right? We were in a strip club. And there's like eight girls on like the platform. And the seating is like all around the outside. And we're like raised up above the uh like the platform where they're dancing and doing stuff and our big thing like on the whole deployment was uh like our platoon was called the all-stars so we would always like play the song all-star by smash mouth and it would like attract our platoon our platoon had like 40 people in it so like every time you'd hear that song in the street you would go to it because it meant that like your platoon was like partying over there so we got a hold of the uh, <laughs> the aux cable inside of the strip club, and we like we strong armed these people into 
<laughs> letting us steal the aux cable and turning the system way up. Uh, so we're now in the second floor strip club blasting the song All Star by Smash Mouth, like just into the, the streets, right? Everyone is able to hear this for like miles around, I imagine. And the girls are like no longer dancing because they don't know what the fuck this song is. And it's not like a dance song in any way. They're just like, what the fuck is happening? Why are these drunk Marines? Like these drunk assholes are fucking with the sound. So, you know, we play the song and then like as it's ending, like 30 people show up. Like a whole bunch of people show up. And it's all of my platoon. So it's like all the people I work with every day show up to include two of like my two bosses uh, and i won't say their names but like these guys are higher ranked than me and they're loaded they are fucking hammered already it's like 8 p.m eight or nine p it's like not even late they are fucking hammered and then everybody else with them is hammered i'm sober i was like not drinking that night i was like you had to have at least one sober guy in your group i was a sober guy um so i'm not drinking everybody comes in fucking dog shit hammered uh and then we're all just kind of partying in there and they're like after about like an hour of the girls just kind of like dancing with their clothes on and shit they're like all right the show's about to begin they like close the door and uh you know like it it, it turned into like a rave almost like it, it got all hype and then the girls took their fucking panties off and they were like sticking stuff in their vagina and shooting it out like chen said like they, I saw a girl shoot ping pong balls out of her vagina into a bucket across the room. I saw a girl do that thing where, like, clowns will pull, like, a scarf, like an infinite scarf out of their mouth. But she did that out of her vagina. And a guy I know and still am in contact with today grabbed it with his teeth and pulled it out with his mouth. I saw a girl peel a banana with her vagina. That was uh, interesting. Uh, there was a girl who put a Sharpie, like a large Sharpie marker into her vagina and then was like, they passed out these little cards. So if you wrote on the card, like anything, you'd write your, like your name. So I would write like Chungus on it. And then she would take a big sheet of paper and write Chungus with her vagina on the paper. And then you had to pay $5 to get the big piece of paper. Uh, so guys were saying very inappropriate things like, uh, the N word and uh, like things like uh, certain World War II dictators did nothing wrong, and they were writing it because it seemed like they didn't speak English. And uh, like throughout the night, uh, some of the dancers would like disappear for like 30 minutes, and then come back with the guys I work with because they were taking them over to places to uh, hold hands, if you will, and then. Uh, I saw my lieutenant, who's like a guy, I, he was my boss. I saw him take off his Converse All-Star shoe, pour his beer into it. He poured a whole beer into it. And then he chugged it out of his shoe. That was, uh, that was cool. And then when the dust had settled and the show was over, we all like kind of slowly trickled outside you know because like the girls weren't dancing it was it was over it's time to move on for the night uh i walk outside with my group and i see on the steps my lieutenant being drunk he's uh drunk as fuck and just like lost i don't know what he's doing he's like against the wall just like vibing and then my platoon sergeant who's like one rank higher than me who's like the rank i'm about to pick up he's a staff sergeant He's on the curb. He's like sitting on the curb like if he was arrested. And he's crying like weeping openly. Like just bawling his eyes out. And I was like, are you all right, Staff Sergeant? And he just kept crying. And I was like, that's weird. And then I left and went back on the ship. And then, uh, you know, didn't see him again. I saw. I mean, I saw him later that night when they came back. But I, just, I was like, oh, that's not my problem. And then I corralled all the drunk guys that I had and got them back on the boat in time so that we didn't get in trouble. And then it was somebody else's problem to get those drunk guys back home. I got my drunk guys back home. But uh, somebody got the other guys back home. It wasn't me, though. It wasn't me.